Welcome everyone. In this video, today we're gonna to be looking at a whole life insurance contract or a high yield savings account. Which would you rather have as it relates to where you save your money? We have a lot of different options in terms of where we can save our money safely, where it is not at risk of losing its principal. That's whole life insurance, that's savings accounts, money markets, CDs, uh, even bonds, right? Where once I put my money in a particular location, it, it cannot lose money. So we're specifically looking at those kinds of accounts when comparing to a whole life insurance policy that has cash value, that's designed for high cash value, right? So that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video today, just looking at the numbers. And my goal is not to convince you to do one or the other, rather, I'm just gonna share with you the options that are available to you that you may not be aware of and I'm also going to share with you numbers, certain strategies, certain things that you may not even be considering is a possibility with your savings, right? So with that being said, let's take it right to the board. Let's not waste any time. Let me give you all the facts and details as to how I gathered these numbers. So on the whole life insurance side, we're gonna be looking at a life insurance company called Guardian. This is actually a real life insurance policy uh, an example in terms of the illustration that I'm providing, but this is actually a real policy that I ended up working with a client on for their child. All right, so this example is showing us saving $3,600 a year. So that's our principal dollar amount. Put that in your notes. This will, I encourage everyone to verify my numbers in case I made a mistake anywhere. Pretty sure I didn't, but maybe there's something I might have missed, right? 3,600 a year is the principal dollar amount that we would be paying into a whole life or a high yield savings account. The death benefit on that whole life policy is starting out at $563,380. And we are looking at the year 2019. So we're going back in time and then fast forwarding to 2023 as I record this video. And then we're gonna look at the next say 10 plus years see how these things are likely to perform in that period of time. So looking at history and then a little bit of projection. Where I go into the projection part is where you and I may disagree on some numbers. Um, you know, that's where I'm gonna share with you my sources in terms of like where I'm getting my numbers from in terms of projections, in terms of rate of returns, that kind of a thing, right? So the uh, back to the whole life, Guardian, 3,600 3, a year death benefit on a nine-year-old. This is back in 2019, female. And the break-even point is going to be year six, which means I pay in $3,600 a year. And I actually don't produce a positive return until we get to year six within a whole life insurance contract. So that's something to be aware of when you are looking at, should I save my money in a high yield savings, money market, CD, right? Bond, regular checking account, cash, or a whole life. And to know that out the gate, you're actually going to be losing money, technically speaking. Why? Well, because you're buying an asset, you're buying insurance, you're buying protection over this human being. So that comes with costs. With a money market, high yield savings, bond, CD, there is no additional benefit of having the account other than whatever the rate of return is for that particular year, right? And that can fluctuate, right? So that's one element, right? It takes six years for this to actually break even. In terms of dollar, principal dollar going in, what shows up in cash value, right? There's two elements to a whole life. There's the death benefit, cost of insurance, premium. Then there's the living benefit cash value, right? Which you can use like a savings account. Now, another element is in order to access your own cash that you've been saving, you either can do a cash withdrawal, no cost, no fees, but that would hurt the performance of the cash value of the policy itself. You can do a loan, right? So if you borrow against your money, you'd be paying a loan interest rate to the same insurance company that's providing you the death, right? And this act, in this example, I use anywhere between 5 and 6% being our loan rate. The guarantees back in 2019 with Guardian was 4%. In 2023, that number has changed. It's around 3%. When you sign a whole life insurance contract, this number does not change for the life of the policy. So this is a 4% guaranteed rate of return for the life of the policy, no matter what. Then there is a non-guaranteed rate, a non-guaranteed rate 
or dividend that is above the 4%. And that number can fluctuate. That can totally change. In 2019, the number was around 5.85%. And then 2020, 2021, I believe it went down to like 5.65%. Then in 22 or 23, now it's at 5.75%, all right? And likely to increase as interest rates increase, all right? As, you know, economy grows and different things happen that can cause dividends to increase, all right? So that's the fluctuating part, but there is that guaranteed part. You've got the death benefit and you've got that loan cost if you need to access the money. But when comparing to a, a savings account, they're both technically very accessible. You can access the money, right? With a high yield savings, you can access the money faster than a whole life insurance contract. It would take a couple days to submit the loan and receive the cash to your bank account, right? So slightly slower on this end. So, so far, those can either sound like uh, negatives or pros, take it how you want, right? My goal again is not to convince you of either one, rather just show you the options, see how these things perform over a long period of time and also how they perform in the short term, right? And hopefully that will help you make a decision. So those are the main points of the whole life insurance side. And then what I showed is the next five year performance of the cash value. The death benefit stays the same, right, during this period. As the policy gets older and older, this death benefit will actually continue to increase, right? But it's gonna be level for a certain period of time. So now the cash value starting out the gate is 3,027, and then you see how I show the number increasing. So that's contributing 3,600 a year. On the high yield savings account, what I went ahead and did was use an example, Ali Bank, which is a very, very popular high yield savings bank. I am pretty sure that when you do your research, you could probably find a higher yield savings account at a different bank potentially. Or if you're someone that hops where you, you switch to another bank because this bank's offering higher rate than this bank. So I'm pretty sure you could play with this to probably get a higher yield than what I'm showing. So what I'm just illustrating is typically what most people do when they have a savings account, they typically don't bounce around. You usually see that from content creators that talk about that and then they, you know, they share that with the community and then a certain amount of people will do that. But I think the reality is most people will bank at the same bank for multiple decades, multiple years, and typically don't tend to switch that often. So I chose a very, very popular bank, Ali Bank, right? And then I did research according to my source is Ali Bank and Forbes. And I went back in time, Googled, and tried to figure out what was the high yield savings rate in 2019 at Ali Bank. And I did that for every year. So in 2019, I got 2.2%. 2020, I got 1.1%. 2021, 0.5%. Then in 2022, 2.75. And then now 2023, you can get up to 4.25% rate of return. So obviously, if you were comparing rate of return, a high yield savings account in 2023 would yield more than you starting a life insurance policy in 2023 because the guaranteed rate's actually gonna be even lower. It's not gonna be 4%, it's gonna be around three, three and a half. You might be fixated on the rate of return and you might not you know, care for what the returns are in here. Now, another element I did forget to mention was that the earnings within a whole life insurance contract are tax-free. So you do not have a tax expense once you have contributed the $3,600 after-tax dollars, right? versus in a high yield savings, you will pay taxable interest on the gains within the um, savings account itself. And I used a tax rate of 22%. Depending on what state you're in, that could be higher, maybe slightly lower. The lower you go, that means you're probably not making a whole lot of money. The more money you make, the higher this number will likely be. So 22% was a number I pulled off Google as well. And that's what I'm using to calculate the cost of the, the gains, right? So for every dollar that we're earning, think of it as paying about 22 cents on the dollar that goes to taxes. Now, I didn't show that minusing each year from the savings account because I believe typically when you pay that tax, it's not technically coming out of your savings. It could, right, for the person that pays their taxes, or it's coming from other income that's an expense outside of the savings. So I'm showing the compounding effect without minusing the tax costs each year. So keep that in mind. That's how I got my numbers here. 
I also showed uh, compounding the interest on an annual basis as if we dumped $3,600 at once on January 1st and it grew for 365 days. That would be your rate of return in the first year at 2.2%, $79.20, right? If it was increasing uh, monthly, then that number would be less, right? Because you're, you know, say contributing $300, $300, $300, $300. The money would compound slower than if you did it in one shot. So I'm showing, when you go do your numbers, I'm showing one initial pay-in, top of the year, going for an entire year. 2019, boom, so out the gate, there's a gain, right? Year two, year three, year four, year five. The time to get to year five is 2023. Then what I went ahead and did was project over projection, right? Looking at the last five years, the average rate of return on the high yield savings account was 2.16%. I went ahead and showed what it would look like if you actually earned a 4% rate of return over the next 11 years. The number would increase to $89,611 over a 11 year. The other thing I threw in here was after year 12. So after 12 years of paying in $3,600, right? I'm showing for right now in this box right here, so I don't get you all confused. Total earned in five years was 1,407.11. Total principal paid in 18 grand. Tax rate 22%, 309 bucks net. 1,097.55. Again, I'm not showing that minus on that number. Then come over to this number right here, 12 years later at a 4% rate of return, we're looking at $53,972 total interest gained $9,365 based off of 4% return minus 22%, two grand, boom, net 73047. In year 12, I showed an example of what it would look like if you, you know, helped your daughter, you know, nine years old, uh, 12 years later, she's like, what, 20, right, ish, okay? And what it would what it would look like if we took out a loan, right, which would be against the policy, or a cash withdrawal from savings to help daughter buy a car. I also Googled, what is the average used car cost in America. And that was the number I got, 27,300 for a used car. Now, obviously that number is based off 2023 number. You go out another seven years or so, that number is probably gonna be way higher. Still use it anyway. So let's say you did a withdrawal from the 53,972, right? And when comparing the whole life, we're still not ahead, right? Even 12 years later, I, the money broke even, still paying into it compared to a 4% increase year over year. If you did it over 2.16%, then the whole life would have a higher yield. So if I looked at, and I'll share my screen here just to show you what, what the compound interest calculator looks like. So let's say year five, I'll change this number. Year five, we're at 19,407 and 11 cents. Can't do the 11 cents. So we're just going to do, I'll give them an extra buck, right? 19,408 contribution, 36 on an annual basis. And we're going to go seven years out at 2.16% growth, right? So from year five, then go year six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11, 12, boom, seven years. Here's where it would be. So you would have 49,433 as opposed to in a whole life insurance contract funding the same dollar amount, we would have $52,820. So technically speaking, if we looked at the average of the last five years of an allied bank high yield savings account, the whole life would outperform that high yield savings account. Mind you, this is a huge, very, very popular bank that's known for having a higher yield than most banks. And again, I'm pretty sure that you could probably earn a higher rate in those seven years or over the next seven years from 2024 and then go seven years out. Pretty sure you could probably earn a higher rate, but I highly doubt that you get an average of 4% for the next seven years. Highly doubt that. So you would have to do that in order to beat the whole life performance, then you have to factor in the the taxes coming out, right? So that the tax is a hit for the high yield savings, where with the whole life, there isn't that taxable expense. So you could argue whether you're doing a rate of 4% or two, three, whole life would come out ahead, but that's only 12 years later. So 12 years later, 
I'm showing whole life coming out ahead of the high yield savings, right? And I don't think many would dispute this, but as you can see, it took a little while to for that to happen, right? Assuming you're getting that higher rate of return of 4%. If you're really averaging like two, maybe three, then then the crossover point where the whole life starts to outperform the high yield savings account, maybe around year eight or nine or something like that, maybe 10. So now in this example of funding a high yield savings account for a child or funding a whole life insurance contract for a child starting at nine years old back in 2019, now 2023, then go another seven years later, we're somewhere around this number, right? About 50 something thousand or so. And if we look at principal dollar paid in over a 12 year period. Uh, so over a 12 year period, we paid in $43,200 at $3,600 a year, right? For both ends. So if we took cash, helped daughter buy a car, right? Now she's 20, 21, something around that age, 27,300 would bring the savings. I'm going off this number, 53,972 is the highest number. Minus 27, boom you're left with 26,672. In the whole life insurance, in order to access the 27,300, let's say we did a loan and I'm using the higher number. In 2023, the loan interest rate is lower, right? It's around 5%, but I'm gonna use this higher number just to create a little you know, room for error here um, and assume we borrow $27,300 at 6%. What does that do to my cash value? Well, as it relates to whole life insurance, when you borrow against your cash value, you're not actually withdrawing from your cash. What happens is your death benefit will decrease. Your cash value is used as collateral and whatever the non-guaranteed rate and guaranteed rate is, you're going to keep earning on all of that 52820 as if you never borrowed it in the first place. So that's a bit of a pro here, whereas with the high yield savings, the moment I extract that 27300 I'm no longer earning that compounded interest on that 27300 that I just used to buy that car. Whereas in this case, I'm going to still earn interest on the whole 52,820. So from year 12 to year 13, it shows my cash value grew to 55,454. With a loan, do the math, times 6% on 27,300, your interest cost would be $1,638 as opposed to a high yield savings account. I take the 27,300, I don't have to worry about any fees, any, any interest costs, none of that. I just now have a reduction in my account. It's now at 26,672, but we're gonna keep paying in the $3,600. Year 12, took out a car loan, all right? Or not a car loan, we financed a car with our cash, all right? Boom, pay cash, no debt on the car, no debt on the car for both examples. But there is a loan on this side, no loan on the high yield saving, right? So you might say, hmm, I may not, I don't know if I, I like that. Or you might like this better, right? So again, we're weighing all these options here. 27,300 extracted, daughter now has a car, fully paid off. You're gonna keep paying in $3,600. What does that look like? Well, on the whole life example here, you now have two options as to what we could do with the $3,600. We could either ignore the loan, never pay it back, and continue to pay $3,600 into the policy. Keep paying into it, keep paying into it. And it's gonna keep increasing the cash. Meanwhile, the interest on the 27,300 will start to compound on itself. And that might not be wise. Another option is you take the $3,600 and instead of adding to the principal pay-in, of the whole life insurance contract, you decide to not pay towards the policy and we're going to take the $3,600 and we're gonna pay the loan interest per year. And then the difference between the interest and $3,600 is gonna go towards the principal pay down of the loan, 27,300. We're gonna see what that looks like, right? So in this example, that's what I showed is no longer paying any more principal dollars into the whole life insurance contract. And if you were to do this, this would be called a reduced paid up where you no longer pay into it. That's an option. Year 12, reduced paid up. So that's what I'm gonna show, is us paying, no longer paying in any dollar. We don't have to do that, but I'm just showing this example what that would look like and then how it matches up. So 27,300 being the net amount owed on the policy loan. 6%, 1,638, 36 minus 1638 is 1,962, brings the balance down to 25,338. See how I did the math, 36 
minus the interest cost, 1,638 is interest that you pay in one full year towards the insurance company. That interest goes to the insurance company. Then the net difference between 3,600 and 1,638 is 1,962. You make a principal payment to the loan, pays it down, 25,338. Rerun the math again, times that by 6%, 1520. 28, I believe is the number. If that's not the number, then it's the reverse. Then that's the principal dollar amount. Do the math. Minus 36 from 6% 6 interest on 25,338. And then minus, you should get this number. 23,258.28. And then I kept doing it over and over again. 21,000. All right. And it goes down to 18,000. It's the interest cost. It would take roughly 11 years to pay off a $27,300 loan by paying $3,600 a year. Quite low of a payment if you think about it. $27,300, $3,600. You know, that's, that's roughly a car payment, you know, 300 bucks a month. Not in today's market, obviously. The average car payment today is like $700, all right? Six, $700 when you finance. But when you, if you finance through a whole life insurance contract, obviously it'd be. A lot easier to do, more economical, more doable. But when it's all said and done, by a year, by 11 years later, so 12 years, then plus 11, the total cash value would be $92,650 with no loans in it. $92,650. Over here, same time frame, 11 years later, right, I showed at $26,672 at year 12. Then I showed 11 years of 4% growth each year very hard to do with a high yield savings probably unlikely to happen so this is a very unrealistic number 89,611 the more realistic number is this number right here 76,862.12 actually nope that might be a mistake I think I did 89,611 times 22 percent the four percent growth that's 5,000 one three four fifty eight and so I did five thousand one three four fifty eight plus 73047 for those seven years, 11 years, and then that 14, uh, the 309. Let's verify that so that I didn't make a mistake. So we did 513458 plus 730470 plus 30956. Ah, yes. So 89 minus your taxable expense, you're going to pay roughly $12,748.84 over the life of this high yield savings account netting you technically 76,862.16. That is in fact, right, less than what this whole life policy would do over a very long period of time at 92,650 plus that humongous death benefit. And that death benefit would have increased over the years. So over a, let's see, 12 plus 11, 21, was it 11, 20, 22, 23 years, right? So over a 23 year period, the death benefit, let's see, would increase to somewhere around $600,000, right? Somewhere in that neighborhood, potentially. Um, I'm looking at, let's see, 23. So I'm looking at as low as, as low as 558. So that assumes we don't pay in another dollar, right? So this 558 number is if we don't pay in another dollar after year 12, right? In this example. So it's more of like 558. The death benefit did go down slightly, but that's still a massive death benefit, I would argue, that we acquired through the same dollar amount as a high yield savings at a net of 76,000, earning an average of 2.16 for first five years, and then averaging 4% the next 11 plus years. So you get to you know weigh this. Hmm. Do I like the the feature of having a, a death benefit? Do I not plan on using the savings for for years and years? I'm, I don't plan on touching that money. Then maybe I'm okay with having a lesser money up front. Or do I know I might need this money more readily and available? Maybe I keep the money here, and I know I'm positive out the gate. You have to weigh that for yourself. Now, if we did a more realistic number and said 11 years at 2.16%, after you minus 27,300. So starting at 26,672, earning an average rate of return each year of 2.16%, the number would be 77,906. So a more realistic number would be 77,906 compared to $92,650 in a cash value life insurance policy. And you can see, oh, well, after a 
a long period of time. And what really starts to happen is this cash value continues to perform. We continue getting that guaranteed rate no matter what. And so if we were to look at when this child at nine years old, when they're, when they're 75 years old, 75 years old, just looking at paying in a principal dollar amount, check this out. A principal dollar amount, 3,600 times 12 years, that 43,200. Principal dollar amount, 43,2, 12 year period by age 75, which would be 83 years later. 83 years later, that little girl is now a grown woman in her seasoned golden years at 75 years old. She would be sitting on a death benefit of 1.7 plus million dollars at a cash value of 1.35 million plus from 43.2. What is the multiplication on that? That's an astronomical difference, I would argue. So that's pretty, that's something to really consider. It's like, hmm, as a father, as a mom, you're thinking, okay, where is a place that I can be disciplined, save money, get a guaranteed rate of return, the benefit of avoiding taxes, avoiding 20, plus percent or more in taxes. And so for every dollar earned over here, we gotta send 20 cents to the IRS. For every dollar earned over here, I save that 20% in taxes and I only pay somewhere around five to 6%. So on every dollar I borrow within the policy, I'm only paying five, six cents on the dollar, right? So if you think about it that way, you're like, hmm, borrowing from myself sounded like really odd. It's like, that's my money. Why am I paying interest? Well, look at over here. This is your money. You're paying the government 22 plus percent on every dollar. Yes, you're getting potentially a higher rate of return, but that higher rate of return gets eaten up by just your taxable expense alone on every dollar earned. So which would you rather do? Would you rather just pay the 22 plus or more percent on every dollar earned? So literally over 20 cents on every dollar earned that you save paying to the IRS. You never see that versus building your own system of saving within an asset class, life insurance, protection. Now I'm protecting the human life value of this individual at a very, very high death benefit that they can qualify for when they're super young. So it's even cheaper the younger they are. And it only costs me five to six cents on the dollar to borrow against the cash value. But what's cool is when I borrow at five to six cents, I'm still earning at least four cents on every dollar. So I'm creating almost a net positive arbitrage of borrowing, right? It won't occur, the positive arbitrage won't occur in the first couple of years, but definitely years 10 and beyond, you can create a positive arbitrage of when you borrow from within the policy itself. And then again, you avoided 20 plus percent in taxes on those gained cents on the dollar on those four cents on the dollar every time earned, you avoided that. And then the compound growth of that, you avoided that, which is why you get these huge numbers. $1.7 million death benefit, $1.35 million cash value. Think about this. When daughter is, say, 27 to 35 years old, you, you helped her buy her first car, this policy could be used to help her make her first down payment on a mortgage, right? On a property or a real estate investment or a business. And it keeps going. Whereas over here, whatever's there is there. When you withdraw from it, you lose the compounded growth on it. Now you got to earn somewhere else or continue to fund it. So it's kind of interesting how on this end, we've got the 12 years plus 11. So 3,600 times 23 years. Over here, we paid in $82,800, if I'm not mistaken, something to that nature. Uh, but then, you know, we used 27 grand in the process. <clears throat> right, we used 27,300 in the process, but netted out less than where you started, right? In principal dollars, let me run that again 3,600 times 23 years, right? 23 years, 82,800. Over here, we only paid into the principal of the policy of 43,200. By the time it reached 52,820, we borrowed 27,3 and paid $3,600 a year to pay that off not add to, right? Remember I told you that was like an option. So technically speaking, 
$82,800 went into here, technically speaking, right? But it didn't go towards the principal growth of the whole life. If that was the case, this, these numbers would be even higher. But if we would have took out that $27,300 and never paid it, that, that interest at 6% will start to really compound and it'll start to look really, really unattractive. So I don't know if I want to go that route. So I'd rather go the route of pay the loan back with the 36 quickly as possible takes you 11 years right now again could that get paid off much sooner sure well then whatever you add to here you got to add over here right so that is apples to apples so if we're just working with 3600 dollars every single year for the next 23 years you can make your argument that well from a long-term cash total cash amount and asset you get way more value than over here, 23 years later, I'm at maybe as high as these two numbers, 89 and 77. But in reality, once you minus that, that 22%, man, that compounds, right? That really does compound in terms of taxes and it leaves you with a net number. Because if it, if it doesn't come from the savings account, mind you, it comes from the other person's income, right? It's going to come from somewhere to pay that, that cost. So either it comes from the account, which I wouldn't do, because then that affects the compound growth. I'd rather pay it with more money. So in this example, you need more money to pay that. So I hope you found value in this. And if you have any questions or if you'd like me to do another comparison, I plan on doing one with bonds, money market accounts, CDs, and savings accounts. If you want me to do any other comparisons, for example, if you want me to compare an investment to a whole life insurance contract like a 401k, or uh, an IRA or any type of retirement account, I'm gonna let you know out the gate, you're now stepping into a apples to oranges comparison because you're comparing a non-investment product to an investment product. So out the gate, the investment product is gonna have a much higher yield potential than a whole life. If you wanted me to do something like that, I'll see what the comments are, I'll see what you guys say, I, I can do it. But in my personal opinion, I'm gonna be asking the question, why not both? Why not have both your retirement account and a whole life? Why not have both, right? So consider that. Hopefully this was valuable. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. If you'd like to jump on a phone call with me, spend some time, run the numbers, get some consulting and coaching in your life to help better your finances, help you make better financial decisions to achieve financial independence, financial freedom, all those different things. If those resonate with you, click the link below. Get a hold of me, join Finance Geek Ministry, fill out my contact form, enroll in some coaching, some services by me personally, and we can become a team to help you reach your financial goals. God bless, and we'll be talking soon.